Hey everyone, welcome back to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads. So today's video is a little bit different than some of the previous videos. I wanted to do a reality TV roundup, more specifically a Real Housewives roundup. Although we are excited for the premiere of a new city, Salt Lake City, which will premiere on November 11th, the Real Housewives of OC premiered already, haven't gotten in, into it. Now with all their problematic behavior, definitely not going to get into it. But it is the franchise that launched most of what you enjoy now from Atlanta to New York City, New Jersey, all the franchises. But I wanted to talk about a little bit of something that I was talking about on my TikTok. And if you're not following me, follow me there. I do quick snapshots of some celebrity news, gossip, whatever you want to call it. And I've been getting a lot of feedback on Cynthia's wedding. As you know, a lot of rumors have been swirling around the festivities of Cynthia Bailey's wedding. Leading up to the wedding, they had a bachelorette party where there were rumors about allegedly Portia and Tanya hooking up with a stripper. No confirmation to what happened there, but of course they want to get us excited to see this new meaningless season uh, coming up on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. But the other rumor that's been going around is that Bravo refused to film Cynthia's wedding. So I got a little bit more information on why Bravo did not film Cynthia's wedding. And, and that's almost, I'm still going to say alleged, However, supposedly Bravo was set to film the outside wedding that was supposed to happen. But because of Hurricane Delta, Cynthia decided to bring the wedding inside. And because of that, Bravo just felt it was not safe enough for their cast and crew to film uh, Cynthia's wedding. Mind you, Cynthia's wedding had approximately, allegedly, over 181 guests. Mind you, this is happening in Georgia. Georgia is open. Uh, and they've been open God only knows how long, although the numbers of coronavirus are going up in that state and many other states that open way too early. And so partially, I can't blame Cynthia for doing what the law says, but she should be smart enough to know that just because your state is not following the regulations of what's going on in the country or the world doesn't mean you should have 180 something people for your second wedding. But I don't want to judge Cynthia because I actually do like Cynthia a lot. However, it to me, it was definitely less than smart to have this wedding. I get it. You want to have your wedding. You wanted to have a specific date. But so many people wanted to do the same thing during this pandemic, wanted to be able to be with their sick family and friends, wanted to be able to bury their family members with a going home celebration, and were not able to do it. Yeah, fans are going to enjoy, you know, the festivities leading up to your wedding. And though Bravo did not film Cynthia's wedding, they uh, will get footage from Cynthia because Cynthia hired her own production to film this. When I say production, more than likely, it was, you know, just like you and I, if we were to have our wedding, we would have videographers there. I'm thinking that's what it is. I'm not sure if it was a full-fledged production team, but she will provide the footage from that to share on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. But I know I've been seeing everyone's feedback on TikTok and on Instagram in regards to Cynthia's wedding. I know it's a pandemic. You know it's a pandemic. Not sure why she would do that, but I understand why Bravo decided not to film it or put their cast and crew in any sort of harm's way for an inside wedding of almost 200 people. Hopefully, they, are, they were practicing social distancing in mass based on the footage. You see it here and there, but it was a lot of people. Just a reminder, guys, I get it. You want to go out. You want to do do your thing. There's so many celebrities that are, I mean, they have they probably have access to rapid tests, and, and, but I'm not sure if this is what people are doing. I'm not in the business of shaming people for not wearing masks or gathering when they shouldn't be. We're still in the middle of a pandemic. All you can do instead of commenting and yelling at these people is protect yourself, protect your family, do what you can. Since we're talking about The Real Housewives, let's talk about Potomac. That's the other big topic. You know, the new episode aired this Sunday. I have to say, I just, I'm just i I'm, I'm hurt for the friendship that once was between Monique and Candace. And the fact that it's still playing out on social media right now. Luckily, charges have been dropped. But this last episode, we saw when Candace filed the charges against Monique for assaulting her. Do I blame Candace? No, she was assaulted. 
if it was a stranger on the street or some other person, you or I probably would file charges. You know, she told the prosecutor that, yeah, she wants Monique punished to the full extent of the law. I don't know about that. That to me is like, wait, you know this woman. You know this woman is, a, first of all, she's a Black woman. The, just the instance of being being taken in by the police puts her life at risk, uh, as we've seen over the last many years, but more specifically recently. You know, she has three young children and you want her punished to the full extent of the law. You want her to go to jail for three to five years, maybe more, depending on, on I'm not sure the, the law, you know, for a second degree assault. Even if someone did that to me, maybe I would sue them. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not Candace. I'm not sure how she's feeling. She was attacked. And I'm not saying that she doesn't have some sort of PTSD from that. She could have. But at the same time, taking this to this level was a little, a little disheartening, especially because they supposedly had a friendship. And I know when we say friendship with these Real Housewives, we have to put them in quotes because are they really friends outside of this? But the other side of this is that luckily, as I said before, the charges, the criminal charges have been dropped. But now there are civil things going on in regards to Candace and Monique suing each other during this whole situation. Monique shared that she tried to reach out to Candace to sort of settle this and, and you know, put it to bed. And she shared information that Candace refused. Candace's legal team refused. Um, and Monique is referring to this as a grab bag for Candace. And I've seen everyone's comments. I, I love that everyone's involved in this conversation. And I know a lot of, there are some people like, why are we talking about this? This is not important. important. The pandemic is going on. No, I think it is important because if anything, we can take lessons from their mistakes because at the end of the day, do I think either woman was right in some cases? And do I think in, in some cases both of them were wrong? Yes, because I definitely think that Monique was wrong because now Monique, first of all, you have your family, you have your children, you have your husband, and you have this budding career that you're trying to build. Now you put it at risk for a lawsuit. Why would you put yourself in a position where someone like Candace, who's very litigious, and if you couldn't tell that Candace is trying to have a come up from being on the show and, and from her actions, especially what she was doing off screen in regards to your family and involving Sharice and all these people, then you, that was your mistake. Putting yourself in a position where someone like Candace could bring a civil suit against you. And she probably will get something from it. Not sure, depending on how good your lawyers are. But I just think it's unfortunate that these women have taken this situation and it just brought it to a whole other level. And again, Bravo is profiting off of this insanity. Not sure if we'll see Monique coming back for season six. Honestly, I don't think it's worth it, Monique, especially if this lawsuit is ongoing. I don't think it's worth it coming back and being around Candace. I don't, I'm not sure how you come back from something like this. You can, I mean... We saw Kenya come back from her fight with, with Portia, her physical fight with Portia, or Cynthia's fight, physical fight with Portia. I mean, Portia's had a lot of fights. <laughs> then, the, then her assistant in the, the alleyway. Anyways, I digress. I just wanted to share my thoughts on it. I want to hear your thoughts. Share your thoughts about the Candace versus Monique situation or Cynthia Bailey's wedding. Are you excited to see it? Or was it just less than smart to have a wedding in the middle of a pandemic with 180 something people inside. Anyways, let's talk about it again. Don't forget to subscribe, like comment and hit that notification bell. So you don't miss any of the uploads and I'll see you tomorrow.